The budget process is uh, full swing. We're uh, finishing up committee works, a little bit of floor activity. The uh, deadline to get bills out of the committee for full MB is uh, April the 18th. Um, we have a weekly meeting with the Senate, the House, and the Governor every week. Um, our sub-chairs are really dug into the agencies. Of course, we have the agency's request of about $1.2 billion. Um, we have identified that we'll have $574.6 million in additional appropriations for this year. Uh, we have obligations of over $200 million that we'll be addressing. Uh, the large item there would be Avalorum reimbursement, bond issues, um, flex benefits, and also it's agreed that we're going to have an investment in hepatitis C for DOC this year also. And um, at the end of the day, we, we will not have enough resources to meet all the requests of the agencies, but uh, we also have ran a lot of bills from one chamber to the other. I think the Senate put out a release that the House has gave them a lot of great ideas of uh, about $1.6 billion worth, which, of course, we strike titles on bills that have impact. They do the same as they cross the chambers. Um, as those bills work through the process of committee and then out on the floor, uh, whether or not they have titles restored or an acting clause struck or amended, uh, the process is working. At the end of the day, uh, we'll come up with agreement of what we will fund and what we will not. Also, savings is a big talk, topic out here this year. The governor has talked about 200 to 250 million. Um, I've been on the record of saying that I think it'd be wise and prudent to save at least 10% of the surplus. Uh, at the end of the day, we'll see where we can get the chambers to agree and the governor to agree on how much we will save and where we will invest. It's always a story written every year, and I understand why about the number of bills that are filed, uh, but that's part of the legislative process. What's happening with the bills so far is roughly 410 Senate bills came over to the House, uh, roughly 390 House bills went over to the Senate uh, of, of the approximately 3,000 filed. Uh, so far, we've cut those down even further. Uh, the House has heard um, 224 Senate bills. They've come out of committee and are on general order in the House. Uh, the Senate has heard 171 House bills. Uh, they've come out of committee and are on general order in the Senate. We're, we're moving through that process. Our next major floor deadline is going to be in three weeks. Uh, that's when opposite chamber bills uh, have to be out. We've had uh, the major issues that we're dealing with right now policy-wise outside the budget that have yet to be uh, determined prior to getting out of session is going to be what we're going to do on criminal justice reform. Um, those are uh, those are one of the last major governor initiatives uh, and house initiatives uh, that we'd like to see happen. We have uh, many of those bills in both chambers. I think we probably have at least 30 various forms of criminal justice reform bills that are still alive in both chambers. There will be significant criminal justice reform movement that will occur uh, that will still occur in a manner though that keeps Oklahomans safe and uh, we don't want to do criminal justice and reform that's nothing but sentencing reform. Uh, that's not the desire of this House, and I don't think that's the desire of everyday Oklahomans. We need to do some sentencing reform. I'm very supportive of the retroactive 780 bill and some of the other ones that are getting those, but we also need to make sure we're investing and we're setting up structures where our criminal justice system is about rehabilitation and treatment as well as punishment and incarceration. And we are trying to have that shift uh, in the thinking, and we see that as a major piece that's going to be going through. What you'll see happening at the Capitol is floor activity is going to pick up substantially. Uh, this is the last week for policy committees. Uh, the chairman, chairman said our A and B committee has two more weeks that they're capable of, or Appropriations and Budget Committee has two more weeks they can hear bills. Uh, our policy committees, this is the last bill and last week in both the House and the Senate. So we'll have a better idea how many bills have made it out. I imagine that number is going to get struck down to about 300 bills from both sides, so struck close to a quarter of all bills uh, that came out uh, from both chambers. What I remind people when, when we have those stories about how many bills that get filed, I always talk about this event as we go through. It's very difficult for a bill to become a law, and it's difficult for a bill to become a law on purpose. That's the point. At the end of the day, if we're doing something, we're taking away our citizens' rights, or we're telling them they can't do something, so we do that process slowly. So, But that process is going well. We feel like we're still being efficient on the House floor, and um, we feel like things in the Oklahoma House of Representatives have run incredibly smooth this year. Uh, I can say uh, in my position as Majority Leader, we are incredibly happy with our House caucus. Uh, we are happy we have been able to accomplish the agenda and items and the goals that we set out with beforehand. feel like it's been a very productive year so far, and 
we think we have a great team that can help along with the Senate and the governor uh, to finish this year's this legislative year strong. You know, if you go back to the history of the April 1 deadline, the reason that was put in place is because at the time, uh, teaching contracts were signed at the end of the year, and uh, schools needed to know how much money, how much funding they were going to have uh, for that year. That's not the way it works anymore. So I think the original purpose of the April 1 deadline, it no longer serves the same purpose. Uh, secondly, if we were to have passed an education budget this year by April 1 without having the full budget, it would have been a much smaller education budget than I think we will eventually end up with as we come through. Uh, inside our budgeting process, uh, it, it doesn't make sense anymore for the same reasons we've had it. What I can say for education is that uh, the chambers are committed, and I know the, the, the chairman can give specifics, the chambers are committed to a robust uh, education budget, and we've, so we've been very clear on House priorities, that we would like to put money in the formula and we'd like to have a teacher pay raise. That We have never wavered in those stances as a caucus. Um, and I know the chairman is working incredibly hard to accomplish those goals in the final budget, and, and we'll have a final and balanced budget on time. We talk about delivering a education budget by April 1st. In all honesty, you cannot come up with that budget or really any other budget by April 1st without giving sincere consideration for all agency budgets. Education gets 50 cents of every dollar we appropriate. It's definitely a priority of the legislature, not just the House, but the House and the Senate. Um, but in order to do that, you, you have to know the rest of the, the agency's budget requests, what you're going to give them. We did do that last year. Um, a lot of people really probably didn't realize, but the, the budgets were worked out when we delivered that budget. Uh, we had to finalize just a few more pieces of legislation, but we knew what was going to be in everybody's budget. So going back and looking at last year and the investment in education it was touched on the fact that uh, the house doesn't want to give a teacher pay raise we do want to put more money into education as far as in the formula goes last year was a 19 percent increase about 481 million dollars into common ed and that's typically when we talk about education where most people gravitate to um, we're going to make another investment in education again this year but i also want to tell you that over the past 10 years of history of agencies a lot of agencies have been cut significantly, and I believe all tides need to rise. With All ships rise with the tide. So there will be other investments in other agencies as long as we continue to move forward as well as education. 